If you smell what the rock is cooking. Today we're making Squash Benedict, a completely squash-based version of the classic Eggs Benedict. I call it Eggs Benedict. <laughs> now first things first, we need to prepare our butternut squash and our acorn squash. Grab your butternut squash and a sharp knife and start cutting around the base of the neck. Then, hey, come on, get back here. Trying to film. Cut off the little nubbin and then cut the neck in half. Then cut the acorn's nubbin and cut that in half. Now squash can be pretty tough to cut, so make sure you have a sharp-ass knife. Finally, cut the rest of the butternut in half. Now all we have to do is scoop out the seeds. Grab two spoons, get in there, and... Well, go ahead and grab one spoon and the butternut squash in the other hand and start digging. Now, if you're a real pro like me, you should be able to scoop out everything in one go without leaving any seed behind. It's, it's just so simple. It's... Well... Remember to grab a bowl and remove the seeds and guts from both the butternut and the acorn squash. Now you can save these seeds, roast them, use them for salads or snacking, but I'm not doing that today. Next, go ahead and grab two foil lined baking sheets and start loading them up with our squash. We want to allow steam to escape from these, so go ahead and grab a fork and just start stabbing the devil out of it. Now that that's out of the way, it's time to start lubing them on up. Now you can use whatever you'd like, but I'm using a nice high quality olive oil. Once that squash is nice and greasy, go ahead and start spreading around using your hands. Then finally, sprinkle on some salt. Now I won't be using all the squash today, but I will be roasting them at different temperatures and times to give you a better understanding of what happens to squash when you roast it, so you can use that knowledge for your own dishes. We'll do this one at 300 degrees for 60 to 75 minutes, and this one at 400 for 40 to 60 minutes. We're also gonna be roasting some apples today, so let's prep those real quick. We'll use a Honeycrisp apple, and a jazz is gay. Go ahead and cut these on up. Leave the skin on, that's fine. Put them in the pan and let's go ahead and check out our final product. The one we cooked at 300 is tender with a cleaner, lighter flavor, and the slower roast allowed it to dehydrate more. This is useful to avoid having the liquid interfere with the texture of whatever you're making. Like if you want crispy, for example. The 400 one retained more liquid but has a richer, roastier flavor. You can create the same flavor with the dry one after it's been cooked by turning up the temperature to at least 400. And yes, we're using the roasty ones today. Now we need to remove the meat from the flesh. Be careful though, because it can break apart on you and it won't look as cool for your video. But you know what? It allows me to show you more techniques. Just scrape the skin off and put it in your container of choice. If your skin is sturdier, you can scoop it on out, making sure to remove any excess skin that comes with it. Or just use your hands. I don't care. Nobody cares. We're going to be making a sauce with this squash, so I want to rehydrate it and add some flavor to it. I'm putting in half a cup of apple cider to two cups of mashed butternut, mixing it around and setting it aside. The acorn squash skin is a whole lot sturdier, so we don't need to worry about it falling apart on us. Though I'm sad I didn't get to use my hands again. Now that those two squashes are done, let's start cutting our pumpkin. Grab that sharp-ass knife of yours and start cutting all the way down the pumpkin. All the way down. Come on. There we go. Use those divots on the pumpkin to help guide your knife on down. By the way, all these squashes were provided by Bainbridge Roots LLC, home of this pretty blue pumpkin. Now, just like before, grab your spoon and start scooping the guts while spilling your seed into a bowl. We're going to be grating this pumpkin for some fritters. So cut your pieces into quarters and then go ahead and have yourself a great time. Wrap it in cheesecloth or paper towel and squeeze out all the liquid. And now it's time for the fun stuff, the recipes. 
for our fritters, let's add two cups of grated pumpkin, half teaspoon garlic powder, half teaspoon onion powder, half teaspoon chili powder, one and a half teaspoon cinnamon, four to five tablespoons brown sugar, and we're starting with a half cup of flour. Give it a quick little mix and let's go ahead and start adding our eggs. We're gonna start off with two and see where it takes us. You can crack the eggs and put them right on in, but it's often better to crack them into a small dish, just in case any shells break off. We're gonna give this another mix, but we're gonna use our hands in order to feel what the texture is. Doughs and batters really rely on your sense of touch. This feels more moist than I want it to be, so I'm gonna add about another half cup of flour and mix it around until it thickens up into a paste and sticks to your fingers. Now let's go ahead and start on our sauce. Wait, wait, why are you still showing this? Nobody wants to see you wiping goop off your fingers. That's disgusting. Well, for our butternut sauce, let's start with three tablespoons of red wine vinegar, one quarter teaspoon of cloves, one and a half tablespoons of cinnamon, one entire nutmeg nut, one half teaspoon of allspice, one half a tablespoon of ginger will be grating, one teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of sugar, two cups of whole milk, one cup of heavy cream, and as much bourbon barrel aged Vermont maple syrup as you want. Pour in your milk and your heavy cream and start warming it up over a medium heat. This will help to more thoroughly incorporate those flavors as we add them. All right, great job, Ben. You poured it all in without making a big creamy mess. And what's that? We're about to start adding in these ingredients? What should we start with, the syrup? <laughs> okay, we'll start with the syrup. Grab three tablespoons and completely disregard them as we add our ingredients. Give it a quick mix, then add in the mash, keeping the heat at a steady medium. The heat really helps to emulsify those flavors. Then grab a little baby whisk and use it to break apart the squash, stirring it until you get that nice frothy latte color. Now we still have our red wine vinegar, but don't put that in yet. We'll be using that as a flavor enhancer later. For now, bring your heat up to a medium high and let it start to boil. Once it begins to boil, go ahead and reduce it down to a simmer to let it thicken. Speaking of thick... Ooh yeah, slap it. Daddy likes it thick. Now it's time for us to go on a meat grinding adventure. Come on! Now this big old pork butt is about nine pounds, but I'm gonna be cutting around two pounds off for our salsages. But don't worry, we're gonna be using this for some barbecue later. Now we're gonna be grinding this to make sausage patties, but our meat's too big to stuff in our grinding hole, so we're gonna start breaking it down into smaller pieces. Start off by cutting it into steaks and then cutting it into strips. Now you could leave them as strips, but remember fellas, the size of your meat matters when grinding, so we're going to make things a little easier on ourselves by cutting it into cubes to make sure it grinds properly. Finally, sack up your meat and put your sack in the freezer along with any grinder parts for at least 30 minutes. It's easier to grind when your meat's stiff. For these sausages, we'll be using one cup of acorn squash, two roasted apples, two small shallots, one half cup of sage leaves, five cloves of garlic, and two pounds of cold stiff meat. Now let's assemble our grinder. Grinder parts, assemble. Slide your meat in the hole, then put in your other ingredients. Though I'd suggest cutting your garlic a little smaller than I did so it doesn't put too much pressure on the machine. Once it's all in, put in another piece of meat and start pressing it through the grinder. Don't forget your jazz Keep repeating the process until everything is pushed on through. Ooh, yeah, baby. Ooh. Now once you have a big ass pile of meat, it's time to add our acorn squash. Plop it on in, but put that spoon to the side because we're going to be using our hands. Cooking is such a visceral experience. Whenever possible, I like to use my hands so I can really get a feel for the texture. Now this has no binder, so the texture should feel light and loose so it melts in your mouth after it's been cooked. But it can make them fall apart when cooking. If you don't want to deal with that, just add three large eggs to bind it. Now that our sauce is reduced, let's add our red wine vinegar and give it a taste. It's certainly good, but to contrast the richness of everything else, I want to brighten the flavor. So I'm adding an extra teaspoon and a half of sugar and another three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Give her another taste, and what's your verdict, Ben? <clears throat> it looks like we're good there, so let's start cooking our sausage. We're going to treat these like smash burgers. Start by grabbing a palm-sized load of meat and forming it into a ball. Place it in a lightly greased pan at medium heat and smash it down with a flat spatula and something heavy like a can of beans. Add salt to taste and cook them for about seven minutes on each side or until they hit an internal temperature of 165. Now, I know that sounds like a long time, but the best things in life are worth the time.
Next, we're gonna add some butter in a pan over medium heat to start cooking those fritters. Scoop them out in the pan just like you would with pancakes. After about three to four minutes, give them a flip and keep cooking for another two or three. All right, we're done cooking our squash recipes, but there's still a little bit more we need to do before we can finish our meal. Wash up some arugula, but not just any arugula. Baby arugula! Oh, look at the baby! I'm gonna call you Rugi. Finally, for our poached eggs, bring a wide pot of water to a boil and add enough white vinegar so you can taste it in the water. You know, just, just a bit more, there we go. Crack your eggs into a separate ramekin, spin the dickens out of the water to create a vortex, then quickly add your eggs while it's still spinning. Turn the heat down to low and cook for four to six minutes or until the white is firm, but the yolk is still nice and creamy. Oh, and this is the final step, baby. Grab a plate for Rugi and, you know what? Just watch and enjoy. There it is, our squash benedict. The fritters are rich and crisp. The sauce and flavor sings to the heavens. The sauce is bright, the egg is creamy, and the arugula adds a peppery bite. But all together, it makes a beautiful harmony of flavor worthy of praise. So roll that beautiful beef footage. We've earned it.